Um, so like Don mentioned earlier and like Mara introduced me earlier, my name's Harley Grenier. Uh, I am the animal welfare coordinator at Mount Air Farms. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and go through a little bit of background information about Mount Air Farms. Uh, I know a lot of you guys, unless you're regional to the Delmarva area, probably don't recognize our name. Um, that's mainly because we're a private label company. Uh, so that means you cannot purchase Mount Air labeled chicken necessarily. Um, typically, we go through either restaurants or other labels or other companies use our chicken as their chicken. Um, so just a little bit of history about Mount Air. Um, so it's been family owned and operated since we started back in 1914. Uh, and that started with Guy Cameron and his uh, now great grandson's uh, father-in-law is the current CEO. Um, and then here recently, back in 2020, we did become the fourth largest poultry producer in the United States, uh, which again, for not having our name out there as often is a pretty, pretty big accomplishment. Um, so we've got a lot of different locations. Um, we have a regional corporate office located in Arkansas. That's where the company originally started at. Um, and then we've got a lot of operations in North Carolina, Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia. Um, so those are where all of our hatcheries, our processing facilities, um, and our grow out facilities are located typically. Um, so in 2020, back in January 2020, we became the first uh, poultry integrator to use the One Health certified label. Um, so I know a lot of you guys are probably asking, what is One Health certified? Um, all you know, the previous speakers before me talked about One Health, um, but this is one of the first programs that are out there that you can actually make sure that you've, you've bought a product that it was certified as a One Health uh, contributor. So uh, just touching on what One Health is again, so it's a concept that the health of animals, people, and the environment are all intertwined. Uh, you can't, you know, silo and focus specifically on one area. Um, if you do that, you're just going to ignore what's happening in the other. So we can't continue to produce efficiently if that's how we run. Um, so this program is actually managed by the National Institute of Antimicrobial Resistance and Research Education. Um, this is housed over at Iowa State University. Um, and so they use the One Health approach to look at other research opportunities and apply those to industries that are going to end up using antibiotics and things like that to make sure that we do things responsibly and that we're raising the best um, animals and um, systems that we can. So One Health Certified is a continuous improvement program. Um, so what this means is that we have a set of standards that we have to meet to put this label on our product. Um, but those standards are liable to change based on current research and data that's out there. Um, so we internally audit ourselves to our program standards about every six months. Um, and then we are also externally audited um, by the USDA's Agricultural Marketing Service. Um, so they come in once a year, they'll look at our program, uh, they'll go out to all of our facilities. Um, so our hatcheries, our feed mills, um, our grow out barns, and they will actually put hands on the birds, look at everything, um, and see if we're compliant with our standards or not. So the actual program itself, there are five main pillars to One Health. Um, so those are biosecurity, animal health, antibiotic stewardship, animal welfare, and environmental. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through um, each of these pretty quickly and then we'll get down to uh, focusing on antibiotic stewardship. Um, so like John mentioned a little while ago, um, biosecurity is a really big part of raising poultry responsibly. Um, so to maintain our label program, we have to have procedures to protect our birds as well as humans against diseases. Um, so each company that has this label, us included, um, we have a very specific biosecurity program. Our biosecurity program meets um, guidelines that have been stated by the NPIP. Um, so these are in place for us to show that we're putting every method um, possible to prevent getting our birds sick and having anything transferred from birds to people. Um, so we have to have corporate sign off on our program annually. So that means that we will go through, we will look at our program, um, we update as needed, and then we have to make sure that our company itself acknowledges our biosecurity program. Um, we have several biosecurity coordinators throughout the program, uh, myself and then our veterinarian staff are all of our coordinators. Um, we do annual internal audits. Uh, we're actually getting ready to do those right now. So we actually go out to all of the farms all the hatcheries and all of the processing facilities and we audit um, to the guidelines to make sure that we're compliant. Um, and then a big key here for biosecurity is elevated mortality reporting, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but this definitely gives us a heads up if there is a biosecurity risk that's coming or if there's something going on. Um, this is the fastest way that we can kind of fix that. 
So animal health, um, we have an animal health plan that our veterinarian staff um, come up with and they review this about every six months. Um, so the components of this program are disease prevention. So our vaccination program, um, animal care that includes, you know, our animal welfare, um, husbandry practices and things like that to make sure that we're raising the uh, animals correctly and responsibly. Um, and the last part of that is action thresholds. So action thresholds are typically related to a mortality value. Um, so anytime these thresholds are met or getting ready to approach that threshold, um, the grower has a responsibility to inform the company of that. And then we react accordingly based on what that mortality event is telling us. And I will explain that a little bit more in detail here shortly as well. Um, and animal welfare. So animal welfare program has to cover all aspects of the production. So basically from hatch to harvest. Um, it's a company specific program. So we at Mount Air embrace the National Chicken Council's guidelines. Um, I internally audit all of our locations about every other month. Um, and then we have a third party annual audit that'll come in um, and they verify that we are also meeting those guidelines as well. And the last thing is environmental. Um, so part of One Health, what they do here is they do what's called a life cycle analysis. Um, so about February um, 2022, we'll send them all of our data that from what we gathered this year during 2021. So this is everything that goes into raising our birds. Um, we'll send it off to um, NAMRI and they'll use a system called GLEAM, which is Global Livestock Environmental Assessment Model. Um, and that's gonna determine our carbon footprint of producing our birds. Um, it's a really cool value. There's a lot of math goes into it. So that is far above where I go. I just make sure that we get the value and we can send it out there. Um, and then in addition to this, all of our farms have their own specific waste disposable um, and nutrient management plan that are in accordance and in agreement with the state's plans itself. So now we'll go into the specifics of what we're here to talk about today, which is antimicrobial resistance. Um, so the big key here from One Health is antibiotic stewardship. So there's a lot of ways that we do this throughout. Um, but the big goal here is that we make sure that if we do use antibiotics, that they're used in a responsible manner. Uh, so a good example is this, that is, if anything has to go in at hatcheries for whatever reason, say there's a breeder flock um, source that has a disease and we're trying to treat that uh, before they go into houses, uh, we verify anything that goes in there. Uh, we verify ingredients. So if we have to put anything in feed, we verify what's going in there. Um, and then we also have a really cool system here called a root cause analysis. Um, so anytime there is possibly a disease threat that's going on, uh, we will go through, we'll determine what the base cause of that is going on, uh, whether it be a disease, whether it be a management issue. Um, and based on that, we'll decide what the best treatment is going to be. Um, so we have what's called a treatment decision tree as well. And what that does is allows us to look at the issue um, and determine what other steps we can take prior to using an antibiotic. Um, so we kind of treat antibiotics as the last step because uh, you don't want to come right off the bat unless it's completely unnecessary. Um, we also monitor repeated treatments. So if you have a house um, or a farm that has had multiple flocks to be treated with antibiotics, uh, we make sure we keep a record of that. Um, there's a lot of training and documentation that goes into using antibiotics, which I'll go through a little specifically as I go through um, the different areas. And then we also make sure that we're tracking medically versus non-medically important antibiotic use. So at our hatcheries and our feed mills, um, there are a couple ways that we do this. So again, we verify anything that goes into the embryos or the chicks themselves. Um, and we are really good at doing chick traceability. So we're able to track um, what breeder source flock these chicks came from, what hatchery they went in, what day they were placed, what day they came out of the hatchery, and what houses they've been placed into now. Um, so it's really key into making sure we can track anytime antibiotics have been used at any point. Um, so feed meal wise, uh, we track what ingredients come in, um, where they're stored, how they're used, how much we have. Um, and then especially at the feed mills, if we do have to produce any type of a medicated feed, um, we do have veterinary feed directives and we remain compliant with FDA regulations on that as well. Um, and then anytime they do produce a medicated feed, um, they have to follow a flushing procedure directly afterwards, uh, meaning that basically the entire system is cleaned so that there's no antibiotic residue um, that could possibly contaminate any other feed produced there. Um, so our grow out operations, so like I mentioned earlier, we have that root cause analysis or RCA, um, and those kind of correlate directly to our action threshold. So anytime we reach that action threshold value at a farm, uh, we will start an RCA, um, and that includes going out to try to um, do any type of a mortality screening um, to determine what's happening. And then the veterinarian is directly involved with any time we have an RCA. 
Um, so it's a pretty, pretty hefty process to make sure that we're tracking all of those. Um, and then again, we have mitigation steps for consecutive house treatments. Um, so we track any time that a house has had a treatment. Um, anytime there's been three treatments in a row, that there's something called a veterinary action plan that has to be made. Um, so that means that the veterinarian will come in directly. She'll go to that house. Um, and we have to go through every, every facet of running that operation to determine what can we do to change that we do not have another antibiotic treatment. Um, and then finally, training on antibiotic usage. Anytime an antibiotic is going to be used, um, growers are trained very in detail on how to use the antibiotic, how to properly run it. Um, and we have documented training and records for any of those as well. And then just the last thing, um, I get a lot of questions on how do I know if I'm getting any OHC chicken? Um, how can I tell? Um, so you'll see this lovely label right here on the left. Anytime you buy this label, um, currently right now, we are the only one house. So that means you are getting Mount Air chicken. Um, it's just a really cool way to be able to make sure that you're doing the good part to help with antimicrobial resistance. All right. And then that is all that I have.